Hey guys, I'm Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia studying 10th grade Myanmar International School. So after what we learned from simple uh, partnership, compound partnership, now we'll, what we'll do is basically extend that idea and uh, talk about simple interest and compound interest. So when do we use simple interest and compound interest? So whenever you go uh, and try to, or basically thinking on investing or buying a property, what you want to do is that you don't, let's say you don't start off with efficient money that you can buy or invest on some property. What you would do is get a loan from a bank or um, get money from some other person. Now, it depends on that person or the bank. The bank basically charges you some amount of money that you need to pay extra for more amount of months that you take to repay them the same amount of money. So there is some interest, that percentage, the longer you take, the more interest you have to pay and the shorter you take, the less interest you have to pay. So it's all dependent on you. Now, to calculate that, we, are, we, we, will, some, uh, we will be using simple interest and compound interest and then we will differentiate between those two. So let's go ahead and start off with examples for simple interest first and then we will slowly and gradually move on to compound interest. So let's go ahead and move on to the video. Okay, so as you said, let's start off with the example for simple interest. So the first example says that suppose Mark lent $200 to Nick for one year on the condition that after one year, Mark, uh, sh uh, Nick has to, will pay Okay, so here we move on to the video and further, without any further talk, let's see the example. Now, example says that suppose Mark lands uh, Nick $200 for one year on the condition that after one year, Nick will pay $220. So the additional amount for uh, after is he has to pay $220 and he only borrowed two hundred dollars so if you see he has to pay twenty dollars more for one year now Nick pays uh, is known as interest now interest cal is calculated per hundred now it's known as percentage so in about case right here we have two hundred dollars interest which is twenty dollars okay in two hundred dollars interest we have twenty dollars as interest so for rupees uh, let's say dollar one we have we would have two twenty twenty over two hundred so here you have one for one dollar you would have one over one tenth dollar interest okay so for let's say hundred dollars you would have ten dollars right and we can find out by using the same method that we did over here and getting that knowing that concept we would say a hundred dollars would be equal to twenty over two hundred which is one over ten times hundred so you do this this and so so here you have ten times one so it'd be Ten dollars. Now we can find it for two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, and so on and so forth. So the basically, basically here, the rate percent is ten percent, and it's only for one year. So rate the uh, rate percent is ten percent per annum, as you can see. Annum is basically equal to one year. So the money is lent. Uh, lent is known as principal and interest if calculated on basic money only known as simple interest. So for example, every year the interest is in about ex given example will be calculated on $200 and its generalized formula for simple interest is basically PRT over 100. Price rate times time over 100. So you have a certain amount of price for simple interest you'd have price times rate times the amount of time that the person take over 
100. So, P, instead of saying price, we have certain certain word, which is known as principal, and R is basically the rate per annum. Now, the formula one, we can deduct from the formula of time, rate and principal, so we can say, if it were equal to R, we would say, simple interest times time, times 100 over P times T. This is the, the first derived formula, and this is the second derived formula formula here. Okay? Now, as you know that we can, we are able to find each and every formula like in the perspective of R and then we can find the uh, formula in perspective of B and we can find a uh, formula in perspective of T. Right? So, since we know we can do that, just, just for the heck of it, we can write it. Because in some uh, later on uses, we know it might be helpful. So P would be equal to simple interest times 100 over R times T. This is third derived formula. And then we have T, which is equal to the simple interest times 100 over P times R. So basically, in order to remember all these three, the letter which is outside, or the unknown letter that you're trying to find, is always equal to the simple interest times 100 divided by the remaining letter that you have. In here, if you have R unknown, you know it's P times R, P times T, because you see R is unknown and we don't know the value, so the remaining letter is P and T. Same goes with the P over here. If you don't know the P is uh, unknown, we can, what are the remaining letters? R and T. So simple interest times 100 divided by all the remaining letters multiplied together. Okay, so now we have divided number of types of quotient and which will show up on your daily basis of exams such as your normal test or your SATs or PSATs. So here we move on to type 1 examples. So let's go ahead, click on the annotation here for extra examples on type 1 of simple interest. Please support cancer research.